uh, host for today's issue of Write. We're going to interview author uh, Tom Fry and delve into his book, more into his book, Here They Be Dragons. So with that said, Tom, how are you doing? I'm all right, Rick. Ready to roll. All right, well, let's go. Now, what was in the drink that Boone drank that caused all his visions, and where was it from? That was just Jack and Coke. <laughs> really? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I I had a hard time writing that scene because I didn't want to introduce any liquor into it. Um, oh, since yes. I, since the whole story revolves around Boone's brother, who's anti-drug and anti-drug counselor. But I had this um, mineral water. It's, uh, it's from the, the Howling Moon Pub in the <laughs> land of Balasar. I have a friend, and that's, she goes by that name, Lady Howling Moon. So I always told her I'd use her in a story. So I, <laughs> I named the pub the Howling Moon. And uh, the drink is, is called Balasar? Dragons. Is it in Pardon? Balasar? Your yeah, in is? Balasar, in the alternative realm that the Dragon Room leads to. Um, I see. And it's a, it's called Dragon's Breath, and um, and Boone drinks it in celebration of him uh, becoming the sole owner of the Havelock Emerald Pub. Ah, right, right, right. Now, what did he see after drinking it? Well, you know, first thing he sees is the lion, uh, the lion man that um, is prevalent throughout the story, which is his name is Ton, and he's one of the seven guardians. Uh, who have come to the land of the Valisar to be advisors. And um, the um, the next thing he sees is a silver dragon, which is Elindria, uh, Drac's daughter, who, um, in, in, in contrast to Drac, is a very kind-hearted, um, uh, loving, uh, good dragon. Right. And, um, and then he sees himself riding a horse, uh, carrying a blue, glowing blue sword, and he's fighting off these uh, antler-crowned warriors, which are the Karth in my book. Uh, they're kind of Viking-like uh, raiders. Um, right. They put fluorescent mire in their hair, and it glows in the dark when they ride, and, and they wear the skulls of uh, deers and moose and elk. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and so Boone sees that after he drinks, has a drink of that um, dragon's breath. It was kind of a mag magical moment for him. Uh, that's the first he's ever been involved in anything Reason's doing with the other realm. Right, right. Okay. Now, why did Billy send the two gems to the portal? Well, the two gems are, are connected to Baphomet and Moloch. And they really? Are the now, what are Baphomet and Moloch? Well, there are two fire gods uh, that... Um, demand uh, child sacrifice uh, back in the day they did. Uh, but they are the two uh, demon-like oh, really? demon -like warriors who come and um, they raise all kinds of hell in Havelock. And Billy uh, sends uh, Stone, Holland, and uh, Caleb, Karim, uh, after them. And um, they end up in G Egypt and... Um, I don't go into detail about all that, but they're captured inside of these uh, two uh, jewels. And uh, that's why Billy sends them back into this realm. Uh, now, is this modern day Egypt or past Egypt? That's modern day Egypt. Um, modern day Egypt, okay. Uh, um, a lot of things happened over there in the Middle East. There were all kinds of, all kinds of gods and goddesses and, uh, and child sacrifice and animal sacrifice. Uh, Blood rights all the time, you know. Now, I said this is current, right? Yeah. Current Egypt. And it's still going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. None of that stuff goes on now. Um, the closest thing is the Hajj, which um, probably um, the Id, I think it's called EIED in uh, the Muslim faith, where they kill so many animals and uh, the bloodletting is, I guess, uh, horrific. Uh, but that's how they that's how they worship um, the spilling of blood um, it, it represents life I I don't understand the whole thing but well it seems kind of awkward to do and kill animals to 
Were they celebrating something or? Yeah, my friend said he was involved in it one year and he said he didn't see any animals being killed at all. Well, I read just the opposite. Thousands and thousands of animals were killed because of this id. And wow. uh, the bloodletting is what what I um, I'm I'm getting on with with these two gods that they're they're fire gods and they demand child sacrifice and they are um, associated with a lot of uh, children's murders that take place in America. Um, they oh, influence. Really? So, yeah, I don't go real deep into that, but there's a section of the book that um, they find out that there are um, ties. To these uh, gods of old from Canaan, from Canaan, and um, you know there are, there are probably two, three hundred gods and goddesses that demanded, you know, child sacrifice and uh, and human sacrifice. Wow, that's certainly yeah. disturbing. Yeah, it is. I mean, honestly, but uh, why did Billy send the two gems through the portal? Oh, with the, the guys to kill them, or yeah, he sent them back here to be able to be destroyed. And uh, in the meantime, two uh, two pranksters get a hold of the jewels and they drop them and crack them, and Moloch and Baphomet escape. Ah, so Moloch and Baphomet were trapped in the jewels, right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Now, what was the debate about Lucas? Even the pit bull perked up at his name. <laughs> yeah, um, the pit bull is El Lobo, and El Lobo is uh, Reason's dog, who's a sniffer dog, an award-winning sniffer dog, who uh, alerted uh, the uh, DA to millions of dollars of the cartel money, and uh, therefore got a uh, uh, target put on his head because the the uh, cartels they they want to destroy this dog, but ah. But Lucas saves him from a dog fight. His uncle tries to involve him in a dog fight with this cartel, and Lucas saves him, and that's why Lobo perks up at Lucas's name. Oh, um, okay. But the debate is whether to use Lucas in this uh, game testing, and um, he's got such a hot temper that they want it to succeed. They don't want to put him in an environment where he's just going to blow up and uh, have one of his uh, rages. And right. So that's the debate right there is that that Billy Connors wants to use Lucas as the playtester and, and Reason's totally against that. Okay. Because Reason's lived with him for a year. He's had him as a foster child and he knows what he's like, and especially when he plays video games. <laughs> ah. Now what lies beyond the second door in the well, pub? That would be the dragon room. Um, that's where the, the science is here. There be dragons. Um, and, and Lucas enters into that uh, being chased by Billy because he broke into the pub. And he ends up being uh, transported to the realm of Velisar. And um, it's the gateway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that the room that's um, made of augmented virtual reality? Yeah, it's tied to that. Um, so explain what augmented virtual reality means. Well, back when I was, um, I had a game I submitted to Electronic Arts probably 35 years ago. I had three eighth grade students that were my gifted right. students. We wrote a script and we sent it in. And Electronic Arts wanted it. And um, another company come along, they wanted to make a virtual reality game out of it. And where uh, we thought it'd be great because um, my whole game centered around sword fighting. We had padded swords we made at the camp I worked at, and uh, they were called Soft Wars Weapon System. We even we even had a patent on them. And uh, really, they were, they were PVC pipe wrapped in uh, duct tape and foam, and so they were soft, but they were hard enough that you could get whacked pretty good with one. And uh, I, I guess so, my, right? <laughs> for seven years, I did that every summer. Um, I took I about 15,000 kids through that whole course, and the draw was the sword fighting. The kids came back every year because this right. is what I live for. This is what I came for. <laughs> so so the, the virtual reality came out of that whole thought of, gosh, we could actually have swords that you swing and stab and, 
And uh, but we were really excited, and um, it fell through. It was just too new. 35 years ago, they really hadn't started any games with um, virtual, you know, um, reality going on in them. Well, honestly, now you haven't explained what augmented virtual reality is. Well, I don't know what that word augmented means. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what augmented means? No. What, 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 are, you, what are you getting at? <laughs> I got it out of your book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't think I use that word augmented. Yeah, you used the word augmented. Oh, well, all right. Maybe I did, but maybe it's my subconscious writing. But <laughs> the, the virtual reality was the main, my main point there was that you could be hooked up to this machine and hooked up to this room and suddenly drawn into the room where you're actually flying or running or riding a horse, swinging a sword. Um, and... Um, to put Lucas in that environment was going to be uh, negative because he, we needed, they, uh, reason needed a youth council and a judge to approve this game. And getting anybody in the juvenile justice system to approve video games would have been hard enough without Lucas having one of his blow ups. Right. Now, let's see. Lucas went through the second door, right? Right. And he saw dragons and everything like that without putting on the headset. Right, right. How is that possible? Oh, that that completely blows the game away. It's, uh, that's what Reason doesn't understand because Lucas comes back with a map too. And he's like, I didn't write that in the gameplay. And, right. Uh, and he didn't write paint and ring in the gameplay. And um, so there's all kinds of things start happening that aren't even involved in the, um, the written script of the game so there's a little bit of magic involved right oh yeah totally yeah and reason yeah. doesn't realize that right oh no no and um he's surprised and the map actually comes to life on the table before him it it it, it um it scintillates and suddenly the um the forest and the mountains and the rivers and everything come to life and um so magic starts to happen right then and there. The the, the contact between Valisar and, and Lucas going there. So Lucas kind of um, made it happen, right? Yeah. He yeah. was an instigator. Yeah, and he did it by accident because he was just trying to get away from Billy Connors because right. he tried to break his stained glass window with a baseball bat. And right. Ended up, ended up falling through and ended up right inside the pub. And... Billy chased him, and uh, he ended up in that room. So yeah. So that so magic was the key element to Lucas entering that room realm. Right. 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 Okay. Now, what does a uh, juvenile court? If you could explain a little bit for the audience, what does juvenile court have to do with the gaming world? Because I, this is the first I've heard of it. Well, see, what Reason is trying to do is write a game that has um, self-esteem concepts in it. And right. My game was written back in, geez, 35 years ago called Castle Land. And it had to do with seven dragons personifying evil. And it had to do with a hero that used his self-esteem and words of power to destroy these dragons. And, okay. Um, what I had set up at camp was I had a play that introduced the audience, 200 campers, to these dragons of evil. And then during the week, they had to go through these obstacle courses and gain these words of power in order to destroy the dragons. Okay. When they came back on Friday night to closing campfire, all 200 kids were armed with the words of power, and it was like a football game. They shouted, and they, they you know, shouted the dragons down, the dragons would dissolve in front of them and uh, crumple to the ground. And um, so it was a um, kind of a magic happened with all that. And um, the... Um, that explains uh, how you got the result right but it doesn't yeah. explain what the juvenile court has to do with it well that's where reason comes in because reason is a um a youth worker with juvenile court and he's uh. a truancy tracker he's a drug counselor and he's trying to create a program that um that builds kids self-esteem and um you see after money from the juvenile courts to do it um no not really just approval um when when the Columbine shooting took place, my friend Gary Gablehouse, uh, 
late Gary Gablehouse, was called to be a consultant at that trial. He was so involved in the video industry that he knew that some video games made kids who were angry even more angry. And he oh, really? testified. Yeah, he testified. He got paid pretty good uh, to testify for Senator John DeCamp, who was the attorney on that, and they won their case. A lot of parents got a settlement from the video companies for their kids uh, being shot and killed at Columbine. Really? Yeah, so that's why I reason. No, I wasn't aware of that. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, that's why I reason has a conflict with bringing it to juvenile court. Uh, but he wants approval. He wants drug counselors, uh, the police, the dare, you know, the people involved in the youth work to approve of this. And so that's the whole purpose of. Let me understand this, though. Did the juvenile courts have to approve money for reason to work with for the kids? Well, basically, yeah. I mean, approving okay. the program so that kids could be allowed to play it. So they would uh, approve the game. It, it didn't get and that. And they would get they would pay money to reason, right? Yeah, but it didn't get that far because right because Lucas entered into the room and screwed the whole thing up. Yes, but that's your theory. On yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. All right. What was the ultimate purpose of augmented virtual reality? Just to involve the kids in a um, in a game that um, they can boost their self esteem. Yeah, and um, the um, the whole purpose of my game was to um, make kids the hero and make kids the um, uh, the uh, catalyst in bringing down these dragons. And so, in the game, the same thing takes place. There are. There are seven dragons in that game too. The reason Rit wrote into the script, um, and um, and then there's a, another dragon who comes along who blows the whole concept because he's worse than all seven of them. <laughs> right. Now hold that thought for a minute. Is the theory behind the augmented virtual reality that kids with increased self-esteem are less angry or better better able to control their anger? Yeah, well, I. Or is it just a time occupier? No, I I think um, I think the um, I've played enough games in my time and watch kids play games in their time to know that sometimes they're fun. They're they uh, you accomplish a lot. You uh, you spend your time trying to solve a riddle or a puzzle and uh, obstacle course, and by by golly, you've done it. 30 times, and finally when you win, oh, man, it's a success. And it builds self-esteem in kids. It really does. But uh, is self-esteem supposed to uh, make the kid less violent or oh, better yeah. able to handle violence well, yeah, or the anger? Kid accepts, yeah, the kid accepts himself. I always told kids at camp, I don't tell you not to say no to drugs. I tell you to say yes to yourself. And if you say yes to yourself, right. you won't be prone to go out and do drugs. And uh, I said, the, the best thing to do is look in a mirror and look at yourself and say, I like what I see. I like what's looking back at me. And right. that was my, my whole, my whole uh, purpose in the seven years I was at camp. You know, we had a table at the end that kids would uh, gather around the table. I'd plant my sword in the middle of it as a round table made out of one of those um, spools that hold electrical wire, you know. And uh, the kids would place their hand on the table and say a vow that when they left camp, they weren't going to do drugs. They, they were going to walk away from it. Out of all those groups, out of, uh, geez, 2,000 kids each summer, I had one group of kids who would not do that. They said no. Really? Yeah, they know, because when we go back, we're going to get higher. Now, were the results with the kids, the recidivism of the kids, Worse after playing your game or better? Oh, I would say better. I would better. Say better. I've heard from those kids years later. I hear from them on Facebook today. Some became counselors. Some became teachers. Um, and they all say that my uh, my program and my books were a catalyst in uh, you know turning them to the right path. And it's kind of interesting. So you'd say that the augmented reality, the purpose of augmented virtual reality was to get the kids to be able to handle their anger issues and be better people. Yep. 
Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, what was Reason angling for with Lucas in their confrontation? The time oh, they had the ball bat put aside, <laughs> didn't pay attention to it. Yeah. What was he angling for? He was trying to get uh, Lucas to look at that bat without saying anything because he knew. See, Lo Lobo sniffed out that bat and sniffed out and knew that Lucas had brought it to the ah. club to destroy the window. And Lucas knew that, or Reason knew that. So he was trying to subtly get Lucas to look at that bat in order to confront him about breaking out the window. And the minute Lucas saw it, he started fidgeting and Reason knew he had something. He knew he was on to something. Right. So um, when did, he tried... Did uh, Lucas actually break the window or did it go through the window? Oh, he went through the window. He didn't break it. He tried Okay, to so he didn't break the window. He didn't do anything wrong. Just having the ball bat was, you know, indictment enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And throwing it through the window, trying to break it, right? Yeah, and later when Reason and and, uh, and Beef take... They take that bat to the church of the den, the elders' den, and they say, this is what Lucas took down there to destroy that window with. And ah. So they got evidence right there that the little kid was uh, out. So Lucas reacted badly when Reason brought up the ball bat. Is that correct oh, statement? Yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. He had a massive fit yep. and left the room. Yeah, but Reason's temper, temper. <laughs> but did it affect Lucas? Did he have you know thoughts about it afterwards? Um, no, because he really doesn't dwell on, <laughs> doesn't dwell on his faults. <laughs> the, All only right. way, the only way he does that is when the dogs start speaking to him through his conscience and, and they try to uh, teach him and try to reach him. And um, that's when Lucas starts thinking is when Grunt okay. and um, Goblin, they, uh, you know, use telepathy to talk to him. And then they relay, you know, what he did, and um, ah, so, yeah. they're the voice of reason to Lucas. Yes, yes. Okay. Now tell us a little bit about Alex, a new character. Alex is a gypsy boy. He's a Shin Gain. He uh, he he was born in Wallachia. His father was a biker from America. His mother was a, a gypsy lady. And uh, he was raised among wolves, a pack of wolves. And, uh, oh, really? There were, yeah, there were pets in the family. And um, his father came back to America. He never got to meet him. Um, without giving much away, he uh, actually uh, is a member of the Elder's Den. And uh, Lucas, or Alex, finds out later who he is. But, um, and he's a, he's a, um, troubled kid. He's in juvenile court. He doesn't go to school. He he has his ups and downs, but he doesn't have the severe anger that Lucas has. Like Lucas has the anger management problem, oh, but yeah. Alex doesn't have a severe anger management problem, right? Doesn't really have an anger problem at all. He's just um, delinquent. He's, uh, he's lost his way. He's lost his honor. And uh, Reason finally calls his grandfather over in Wallachia and talks to him, and his grandfather says, he's lost his way, he's lost his honor. Maybe you can see if you can get that back. So that's the reason the men get together and decide that Lucas won't be suitable for the virtual augmented reality, and Alex will. Right, right. Okay, now you had a fascinating scene in your book, right? Uh, where Alex was walking through an alley, and he had someone speak to him. Who was it that was speaking to him? And you know, what did she say? Because I assume it was a woman, right? Oh yeah, that was Celeste. Okay. That was Lucas's older sister, and uh, she was one of Reason's uh, failed cases. Uh, she ended up in uh, juvenile court and uh, was truant all the time, and she ended up in drug treatment in Omaha. And um, she plays a big, important part of the story. But she is testing Alex to see if she can push him over the edge and see if he'll blow up before he goes to test the game. And uh, so she brings up his past. She brings up that, you know, he was born a gypsy child and, and wayward and rejected. And uh, she, tries to, she tries to make him mad. And she's not even seeing why she's talking to him because she's hidden in shadows. She's got, a, she's got right. magical abilities herself. Ah, it's magic that she hid, that he couldn't oh, see yeah. her, right? Yeah. All right. How did she get involved with testing Alex? 
Well, she brings up all his past and. Um, yeah, but how did she get involved in it? What motivated her to get involved with Alex's past? Oh, okay. And how did she know about Alex, that he was going to be considered for the virtual re augmented reality? Well, Alex is Lucas's best friend. They've grown up together, and so they, they have a relationship. And, right. Uh, and Celeste knows Reason is trying to get this game going and knows that he's chosen Alex instead of Lucas. And um, she agrees with that. because How she does she know, by the way, that uh, Reason chose Alex? Well, she's talked to Reason about it. They've talked uh, okay, okay. Yeah, they, they, um, she's hated him with a passion all this time, and then when she finally gets out of the juvenile justice system, she sees, you know, the way that Reason was really trying to help her. And now she's really um, excited that he's trying to help her brother. And so ah. she wants to do everything she can to try to help Reason. And uh, she knows that's a reason, Detra, for involving herself in Alex's predicament. Right, right. right. Good enough. All right, we'll yeah. leave it right there for now. This is okay. the... All right, but we're going more further into your book, Here There Be Dragons, by author Tom Fry. And could you tell the audience how to get in touch with your website and your email? Well, it's www.tomfry.org is my website. Right. And, and my email, authorfry at gmail. And um, I'm... Uh, dot com? Tom, authorfry at gmail.com, right? Yes, dot com. And uh, on Facebook, how do the people get a hold of you? Tom J. Fry. All right. So next time we'll get further into the weeds with how this all unfolds. <laughs> and until then, thank you very much for the interview, Tom. I appreciate it. And Godspeed, right? Thanks, Rick. It was fun. All right. Bye-bye. Okay.